So uh, our next speaker is Claire Richards, uh, and she has five collaborators that are joining. She teaches in, in Department of Nursing and System Science in the College of Nursing at Washington State University in Spokane, so just uh, not very far from here. The talk is uh, Mapping Research Priorities for Climate Change Adaptation in Agriculture, a One Health Perspective. So welcome, Claire. Okay, great. Um, thank you for having me. All right, so yes, this is a, a, a small study that we conducted at Washington State University, uh, mapping uh, research priorities uh, for climate change adaptation in agriculture. So uh, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, this is a project that was led by an, an interdisciplinary team, uh, including three uh, faculty members and a research assistant from the College of Nursing. Uh, one of those faculty members is focused on public health and uh, a faculty member from the College of Agriculture, uh, Human and Natural Resources. Um, and this was funded by a Washington State University Sea Grant. And um, as uh, many of you are already aware, we are in a, in a climate emergency. Um, so this last year, uh, globally, we hit 1.45 degrees of uh, warming above pre-industrial temperatures. Um, and so I think it's it's pretty inevitable that we're going to overshoot one and a half degrees. Um, and we are projected to hit 3.2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, um, which is uh, a devastating um, amount of warming. But, but the closer that we can limit uh, heating to one and a half degrees um, means that we're better able to adapt. Um, and the, the hotter those temperatures are means that we have more heat extremes, more drought, water stress, extreme and uncertain precipitation, coastal flooding, uh, wildfires, uh, vector-borne diseases, um, and uh, biodiversity loss and economic impacts as well as food insecurity. And so these are obviously you know, changes that pose threats to agricultural productivity and the health and well-being of agricultural workers as well as animals and livestock animals. So this uh, is in particularly important in the Pacific Northwest because uh, in Washington alone, we have over 300 different commodities um, and uh, a lot of agricultural workers, um, especially through the H-2A Temporary Agricultural Program, which allows workers to return every year. And it is during the peak agricultural periods um, where workers as well as animals are, are much more likely to be exposed to extreme heat and wildfire smoke. Um, and these risks are, are significant for both the farm workers and the livestock animals. Um, and what increases risk for workers is that they, they are often paid by the piece, and so they may push themselves to work harder and avoid taking breaks, or they may not have access to shade, which puts them at risk of heat illness. Um, and, and also, so it, sh it should be noted that agriculture has one of the highest rates of occupational heat-related deaths. And... Um, and wildfire smoke is also an issue, um, but uh, protections are often lacking in the in the workspace. And um, livestock animals are also affected. So animals can experience reduced milk production, weight gain, and um, reproductive impacts, as well as increased mortality and the spread of parasites and pathogens. So this motivated um, the objective of our, of our study, which was to identify priority areas that need further knowledge to protect the health of agricultural workers and livestock animals from climate change in the Pacific Northwest. And I would add that another intention of the project was to create ideas for potential collaboration across the university in this area. So we based this study on the One Health Framework, um, which is a global effort fostering interdisciplinary collaboration to address challenges in human, animal, and environmental health. Um, initially, One Health was focused primarily on zoonosis, but there um, has been work to extend the framework to other areas such as chronic di disease, antimicrobial resistance, ecotoxicology, and health in, in urban environments um, for a few of those examples. Um, and so for our methods, uh, we use a group concept mapping, which is a participatory mixed methods approach that includes six steps. 
Uh, we use a software called Group Wisdom Software, and this includes a web-based platform where research participants are able to consent to the study and participate. So as a team, uh, we developed a prompt and then uh, also a list of people within the university and extension offices who had interest in the subject area and then uh, identified them through the directory and making inquiries of people who, who we knew were in the interest area. And then participants were required to be affiliated with the university as a current or emeritus employee. And they were invited to contribute research ideas and then separately come back and sort and rate those ideas. And then um, analysis was conducted using a multidimensional scaling and hierarchical cluster analysis that presents those uh, results in, in maps, which allow us to, to reflect on the meaning of those maps um, and, uh, and then use those results. So the prompt that we developed was, uh, what do we need to know to reduce health risks for agricultural workers and livestock animals in the Pacific Northwest in the face of climate change? And the results were that we had um, over 67 participants were identified and contacted. And of those, we had 20 unique participants that enrolled and participated in the study at one of the, at least one of the stages. Um, these included faculty, uh, retired faculty, administrators, university, extension specialists, and postdoctoral fellows um, from agricultural, veterinary, animal, and environmental or human sciences. Um, there were 40 unique research ideas that were formed into five clusters and themes. Um, each dot on these cluster maps represents a different idea. So ideas that appear closer together um, were sorted more often together. And then uh, once those clusters were created, we, we named those clusters based on the content of the research um, statements. Um, so cluster one was air quality impacts in humans and animals, and this was mostly about wildfire smoke on both animals and humans. Most statements included both. Um, cluster two was scientific investigations in animals and products. So this was about understanding and mitigating the impact of climate extremes, such as uh, extreme heat, um, and also adapt adaptive strategies, health, nutrition, and disease transmission. And so an example statement is explore synergy or co-occurring impacts that can be damaging to people or livestock. Um, cluster three was about production system adaptation. So this was about the evaluation of current and potential measures to mitigate the uh, impact of climate change, while also assessing trade-offs of effectiveness and economic benefits with unintended consequences and environmental impacts. So most, and most of these items did not call out a specific climate hazard. So an example statement is explore uh, effectiveness of strategies or practices that can ameliorate impacts while not affecting profitability of production. Um, cluster four was uh, forecasting extreme uh, weather events. This was about forecasting and measuring and predicting future environmental hazards and impacts such as extreme heat. Cluster five was Operational, occupational health and labor. So this is primarily focused on developing and evaluating strategies to reduce the impact of environmental hazards. So, and two example statements were identify barriers for ag workers to use better protection and identify the most likely paths towards uh, climate justice for frontline workers. So these are, this is a pattern matching diagram. This shows uh, the relationship of the entire clusters to the ratings of importance and feasibility. So most of these clusters were considered more important than feasible, except uh, forecasting of extreme weather and scientific investigations. Um, and I would venture to say that this is because um, those particular clusters um, had more items that were more about measuring and understanding relationships rather than finding solutions. And I think there's a sense of urgency to find solutions to the problem uh, rather than just describe those problems. On the flip side, uh, the go zone map shows the importance of feasibility on the statement level. So here you can see along the x-axis, the feasibility on the y-axis, the importance. Most all of the clusters had at least one statement within the green zone, um, but uh, the largest clusters had, were clusters one and five. So air quality impacts and occupational health and labor. So uh, quickly, I realize I'm out of time. Uh, 
we have uh, uh, further discussion. Um, among the research participants, uh, studying the reductions of climate-related risks was considered important and feasible, but um, in the statements, there was little integration of the One Health framework. So often the statements included animals or humans or the ecosystems, but uh, or maybe just two of them, but rarely all three. And furthermore, um, there were real challenges uh, presented in the statements about balancing the interests of humans and non-humans with overall food production and the economic implications uh, of adaptation. Furthermore, the wording of the statements about animal health and welfare really sounded like they were about productivity. And it wasn't clear that the animals were viewed as deserving uh, of health and well-being in their own right. Um, so this really highlighted for us the need uh, for more work within One Health to integrate justice considerations and provide some real guidance for how to think of the trade-offs. And last but not least, uh, adaptations statements were, were often about risk reduction. So they were addressing the, the symptoms of vulnerability rather than the root causes. Um, there were some statements that um, had appeared more transformational, such as like, likely pass to climate justice, but this was not rated very feasible. And nevertheless, I think it is really important. We have an obligation to allow ourselves to answer some of these questions that challenge the status quo because the status quo is what got us here in the first place. So in conclusion, we need a more justice and equity oriented approach to climate adaptation. Future work should include diverse perspectives and um, broader representation from agricultural workers, indigenous knowledge keepers, healthcare workers and practitioners, as well as policymakers. Um, this integration is crucial for developing transformative approaches to adaptation. Uh, lastly, there needs to be more institutional support um, and resources for reducing barriers to interdisciplinary team development. And thank you. Thank you, Claire.